Hi, thank you for tuning in. I've created this video to explain a problem which I had with console 2.0 software, which comes with any Apollo interface. I'd recently purchased an Apollo 8P interface, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with it. Um, the, the issue I had was with the, the console software. It's not an issue with the software as such, it's just an issue more with myself not knowing how to use it, something I couldn't quite get my head around. Uh, I should say that prior to the Apollo interface, I was using a Focusrite interface, which comes with Sapphire Mix Control, which is a really sort of intuitive way of, of being able to route different signals to different outputs. So using the console uh, software was very much different for me. It was, it was a big learning curve, and so I had to sort of get my head around it. Now, the problem I had was how do I set up different headphone mixes and how do I assign different parts of my DAW track to a headphone mix? For example, I may have a singer around and the singer may be in the live room, which I have here in my studio. And the singer may say to me, please get to have a little bit more or less metronome click. Please get to have more of my vocals or less vocals or please get to have more drums or whatever element of the track that you're particularly wor that you're working on in that moment in time. There may be any instrument or any any track within that project that you want would, would need to turn up or down in a headphone mix. How do I do that without messing up my monitor mix, which I'm listening to here in the control room? That was the problem that I had, and that's what I've managed to finally find out, and which I'm going to hopefully explain how to do it. Firstly, I should just say as well that the way that I managed to get around this was I actually um, contacted Universal Audio myself using their helpline, and they called me straight back. It was a fantastic service, and they explained to me in detail how to do it. I did ask them... Uh, at the end of the conversation why there wasn't a video covering this because there's lots of tutorial videos on the console 2.0 software on the Universal Audio website and on YouTube but there isn't one as such explaining to me exactly what they explained to me on the phone and they did say yes it's something that they they acknowledge they, they're aware that there needs to be a video I assume I'm probably not the first person to have maybe contacted them about this and there is they're working on it I think they're just very busy but they're working on it so watch this space or should I say keep an eye out on the Universal Audio website. I'm sure that there will be a much more in-depth um, and much more professional video coming your way very soon, explaining how to do exactly what I'm about to do, tell you to do now. So, okay, here we go, uh, headphone mixes. I'm, I should say also I'm using an Apollo 8P, so you can see I've got eight analog inputs here, um, ADATs, and at the end, if I scroll a meter bridge across, you can see the virtual instruments there. It's the virtual instruments which are actually the key element of what we're about to do. Uh, you may be using an Apollo Twin, an Apollo 8 or Apollo 16 um, or any of the Apollos. If you're using the console 2.0 software, it should be exactly the same. You'll just have more or less inputs depending upon the interface you're using. Okay, let's go across. I'm using Logic, Logic 10. Let's go across to here. I've opened up a project. This is a project that I just sort of put together a couple of days ago, which I thought I'd use for this demonstration. In this project, I've got eight channels of drums, live drums. I've got two channels of guitars. And I've got bass. So it's just drums, bass and guitar. And I'm also using the Logic Click. Uh, usually I would probably set my own click up for whatever reason. In this instance, I'm using the Logic Click. Now, by default, all of these tracks will be assigned to the stereo output one and two of your interface. But we need to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my drums and I'm going to assign all of the drums to outputs 17 and 18, which is virtual instruments one and two. Now, you may, you may notice as I've opened up this output tab that all of the different interface outputs come up alongside the DAW outputs. That's, there's a really uh, easy to follow video from Universal Audio explaining how to set the uh, mix, uh, not mix control, the console 2.0 software up with your different DAW. So whether you be using Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase or any of the others, there'll be a video explaining how to set it up with that particular DAW and if you do follow that through it's worth it if nothing else just to be able to get these tabs come up with the actual interface outputs. So I'm going to assign my drums to virtual instruments one and two. Okay the next thing I'm going to take my guitars and I'm going to assign my guitars separately to virtual instruments three and four and my bass I'm going to assign to virtual instruments five and six. Now, obviously, depending upon how many tracks you've got, this is a relatively small project with only three sort of key elements to it. But depending on how many, how big your track is, you may need to assign 
different instruments or you may need to group instruments together in certain um, virtual instruments. I'm also going to assign the click here. So we're going to go to the metronome settings and I'm going to assign this to uh, virtual instruments 7 and 8 which will be 23 and 24. Okay, so I've got four elements here. I've got the metronome, I've got my drums, I've got my guitar and I've got my bass. Okay, let's move across to the console and let's scroll across the meter bridge to the virtual instruments. Now you can see all eight channels. Obviously I've got stereo um, so I'm going to link these, link three and four together, link five and six together, link seven and eight together. Now for anyone wondering why it's automatically labeled these up, guitars, uh, drums, guitars, bass and click, it's just simply because I've done it just now before I recorded this video to check it all worked and I had already labeled these up myself. By default, these will shine up, these will show up as virtual instruments one and two, three and four, five, six, seven and eight. So you can label these according to your uh, whatever they're assigned to. Worth doing just because when you do come around to having to turn things up or down in different headphone levels, if you if you have them labeled up, you can just quickly see what they are and grab them and turn them up or down. Okay, so that's great. Let's go back to the logic and let's click play on our project and hopefully we should get some signal. So you can see the click coming through here. The guitars are coming in. You should hear some drums and bass coming any minute. Okay, fantastic. So we have all four elements of our track playing and coming through in the, in the console software. And I can now turn these up or down accordingly in my monitor mix, my, front hub, my mix that I'm hearing here in the, uh, in the studio. Um, okay, let's just stop the track one minute. Okay, so that's great. Now, how do I send these different channels across to the, the headphone mixes? Okay, now from here, it's actually quite straightforward. First of all, you got to go into your cue mixes and by default these will be set up as none and none now in my particular studio i have a live room uh, and the on the back of my interface line outs one and two is going across into that live room so i can send either two mono headphone outputs or one stereo um, let's say i have a singer so i'm going to send it line one and two and i'm going to set that as cue mix one um, I also have line outputs three and four going across to just actually in the monitor room here as well. So I can turn this, the monitor speakers off and have a, a, a musician here. So let's say I'm doing that. I, I might have a guitarist in here and I will assign that to line three and four and make that QMix two. It's quite important that we select QMix one or two and not the monitor. So let's just do that. These these here are the headphone. Um, it, uh, for me, I have two headphone um two headphone outputs on the on the front of my interface. Uh, I'm not using those, so they're sort of redundant in this instance, but you might want to select those if, you're, if you do decide to use the headphone outputs there. But I'm going to be using line outputs one and two and three and four. Okay, so that's that set up. So I've got my four different elements of my track. Now I just need to be able to send them. So all I'm going to do, you can, you can do this by either clicking on the send tab above each channel, or I can click the send view here. And which will bring up, depending on what I've got selected, it will bring up the, the 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 whatever mix I've got selected. So in this instance, I've got Q mix one selected. So therefore, I am mixing Q mix one. So line puts line outputs one and two are going into my singer. My singer is or line outputs one and two are selected on Q mix one. So Q mix one here selected. I can now set at the moment. There's nothing coming through that channel, but I can turn up the drums the guitars, the bass, or the click, independently of each other for that particular musician. And I could also do exactly the same for QMix 2 for the second musician. I can turn up the drums, the guitars, the bass, or the click for that musician too. I can also choose to listen to either my monitor mix, which is this main fader section here. I can choose to listen to QMix 1 or QMix 2 accordingly. So hopefully that explains everything. Um, you may want to also set up some reverb on an auxiliary channel and I could quite simply go to QMix1 and I can send to QMix1, I can send some reverb to that channel so that they can pick up some reverb on their own vocals and more or less reverb. And you can control the amount of reverb here on the aux send. Um, so the, the, 
it's a really easy way to be able to send different parts of your track to uh, a singer or a musician which changed the way that I'm going to be working with this from now on. I'm quite excited to now get somebody in the studio here to, to be able to use it properly um, and sort of benefit fully from all the, the different routing options that you can now have on this console 2.0 software. So hopefully that helps. Um, like I say, watch, uh, keep an eye on the Universal Audio website. I'm sure there'll be a much more in-depth video explaining this a lot better than I just have. But in the meantime, I uh, hope this, this sort of helps anyone out that was experiencing the same problem I have. Um, thank you for watching and good luck with it all.